Hey there, Eric Hyman here uh, for Trial and Eric. This is the July edition of it. Uh, as you can see, my mustache has grown in even more. So time is going by, and that Queen show is getting pretty close next Saturday. So I'm getting really excited. But right now, I'm here in State College, Pennsylvania at Penn State with one of my favorite people, Jennifer Zengrelin. And uh, we are here at Mario's Restaurant. And we're here because this is the place that I used to work at when I went to college here in, at Penn State. And right here, I used to bag pasta. And this became my favorite style of food, this Italian, it's just amazing food here. So I had the joy of being able to come back with my little cooking show, my little online cooking show, and, and work with Jennifer and have her show you guys one of the things that she's really good at making. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Glowing recommendation there, right? I don't know how I uh, live up to that. Well, hey, you guys run an amazing business and, and have great food, so. Thank you. Thank you. But, um, so today, I'll start with this. Specifically today, you have a thing called Vine Talk. Yeah. And that's where somebody comes in and brings wines and they talk about it and the origin of them and where they come from. And today's wines are from? Umbria. Umbria, Umbria. which is? It's a... I would say north central uh, region of Italy is the only region that's landlocked. Uh, yeah. Every other region in Italy is uh, surrounded by water. Um, <laughs> and so Umbria they have, like, is the, the only resources one that's of the, of the ocean. Yeah. yeah whereas yeah. Umbria does not. No. But every region in Italy does grow grapes oh, yeah? and produces wine. Absolutely everything. Oh, that's yes. cool. Yeah. So today we're going to go over wines that come from this region. But you also wanted to kind of include some food that comes from this region yeah. as well. So what you picked to show today is called? Uh, we're going to do a tagliatelle um, with a traditional truffle sauce. Umbria is known for their food, including their wines, but they're yeah. known for their food. Um, things that are famous that come from Umbria, mortadella, which is a, uh, a, a cured ham. Oh, yeah. um, is one thing um, olive oils or another um, but the third thing is truffles they have lots of truffles in this so region. I've never been I've never known much about truffles but truffle it's a mushroom it is a fungus it's yes. a fungus it's a type <laughs> of fungus but what makes a truffle different than just your regular mushroom the truffle grows underground oh okay and it is the scent that enable pigs not dogs pigs to find them and that's what traditional Italian Farmers who farm yeah. truffles use to find the truffles because obviously you can't see them. There's nothing they like find, a carrot. They find the truffles right. because of pigs. Because of pigs. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so they yeah. so what? I feel like truffle sauce and a lot of things truffle oil. Mm -hmm. They're all derivatives of the truffles. Truffle. Yeah. Yeah. So truffle oil, you take truffle shavings, truffle pieces, and infuse the oils just like you would making rosemary oil. But or, people can actually eat the truffles. Very They're not much. just used as like no, yeah, some yeah. kind of puree or something like <laughs> no, that. No. Cool. So today you're making tagliatelle with truffle sauce. Now tagliatelle is a fresh pasta yeah. that's cut wide. So I'll cut it for you here. Also, yeah. it's yeah, probably yeah, about yeah. double the size of a uh, fettuccine. Double, double, triple the size yeah. of fettuccine. Well, pasta is my favorite thing in the <laughs> world. I love me some pasta. All right. So do you want to get started? Yep. We we'll just move everybody a little bit closer okay. as you get Let's over see. to that. Okay. There we go. Um, oh. Yeah, yes. Good. Um, our tagliatelle with truffle sauce is going to start with um, a traditional uh, sautéing. Uh, a lot of people use onions, but a lot of Italians use shallots. Shallots, which are sweeter. Than yes. I they love are. shallots. And so, do you use? I just read in Food Magazine. Because mm -hmm. I get very excited. Food Network Magazine. Sorry. <laughs> Food Network Magazine. That somebody asked, when you have a shallot, do you always use the whole thing, or do you use like? parts of it because it doesn't really clove off as, as much. It doesn't. Here in the restaurant, yeah. we use, we get peeled shallots like yeah. this so that they're fairly clean uh -huh. and we use the whole thing. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, dice some shallots. Um, my knife skills are a little uh, rusty here. You got that. <laughs> and um, just get it ready. Um, in the restaurant, we do what's called mise en place, which I'm sure a lot of home cooks do. Yeah. Um, but like to get everything ready, put it in little bowls so that when I'm when we're, when we're ready to cook for 200 people on the line, yeah. we can do it quickly. It's not like you're rushing around like I do. 
where I'm like, oh, I forgot the spaghetti sauce, and then I like <laughs> disappear from frame for about a good 20 minutes looking for it. Okay, so I'm gonna make one order um, right now. So okay. for, if you're making for four people, you maybe want to triple the amount of shallots and salt and pepper and yeah. things that we're gonna use. So, okay. Um, thing there. So I've, I've uh, diced a shallot. I some people. If they don't really like onions or shallots, we'll do a really fine dice and then saute it so that it almost um, disappears oh, <laughs> a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but I, but I like this the taste. It gives it, especially shallot gives a nice little sweetness. Yeah, and, and then you can kind of see it and you know what you're eating. Yeah, yeah. So That's we really dice good. shallots. Very cool. Um, this recipe is very easy. What it does require is that you find a really good quality truffle pate, and a truffle pate is just as good as truffles. You're eating real truffles, okay. but what it is is pieces of truffle that have been um, chopped up and stored in oil. That have been stored in oil. Mm -hmm. Like in the same way that whenever you get like mozzarella balls or something, how they're just sitting in that olive oil with yeah. all the different spices. It helps preserve them so yeah. that it doesn't go bad. Yeah. Um, and for Very us, uh, if you like the trace of truffles and you like the smell and the aroma, um, econ more economical ways of serving truffles are yeah. through truffle oil truffle pâtés. So this truffle pâté here looks like this. Can you see? Get really close. There you go. And it looks like just really finely diced mushrooms. That's it. It is finely diced. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they've truffle. been sitting in that oil. They've been sitting in the oil, yeah. So That's you can also cool. use the oil to flavor things with if you don't want to. Uh, and this is from Italy. It is from Italy. It's authentic. Um, we use a black truffle pâté. Yeah. Um, white truffles are winter truffles and okay. they are more expensive and harder to find because they're yeah. trying to forage them for, for them in the winter time. Drop black truffles are considered summer truffles and they're although very expensive, not yeah. as expensive as white truffles. But taste wise, is there taste a difference wise, between I, the white and the black other than the look of it? I'm um, sure there must be some taste difference, but personally you can taste it. I can't taste it. However, a lot of people say if you if you're shaving fresh truffle right oh, there, yeah. you the white truffles are more pungent. Hmm. Interesting. All right, okay. so now we have so our shallots. So shallots, our um, making sure we have our truffle pate. I like to keep it in the jar until I'm ready to use it. Uh -huh. um, truffles are, it's not like regular mushrooms where um, you cook to release its liquids and they wilt and they become you know, part of something else you're doing, a ragu or something like that. Yeah. Truffles, if you cook it, will lose its flavor. So we oh, add it at weird. the very end. That's smart. Everything. Yeah. That's very um, and this is a really, really simple recipe. A lot of Italian recipes are very simple, so all we're doing is yeah. using um, shallots, salt, pepper, heavy cream, truffles, and our fresh pasta. That's great. So, um, let's. I was thinking what we would do is cut our tagliatelle. Um, okay. We make. Sorry, in a half an hour, there's not enough time to, no, to make no, fresh no. pasta. So. We, um, at Mario's, we make our fresh pasta. That's awesome. Um, we actually make it for all of our restaurants that make ravioli um, and do other things. So um, we have uh, sheets of fresh pasta. What I like to Smells see awesome. is if you feel it, feel how thin it is compared to what you would buy in the grocery store. Oh, or yeah. Even when, okay. So the thinner, the better. Because, you know, while people like to eat pasta al dente. Yeah. The thicker it is, the harder it is to maintain that. Oh, so yeah. we go as thin as we possibly can. So a tag latel, and it's, fresh pasta takes less time to cook than cooked pasta, than like the pasta that you pasta. would get dry pasta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, really simply, uh, tagliatelle, about like that, a little thinner. I'm being told a little thinner. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So I'm just going to cut pieces. And they're, and they're kept in, in those strips like that. Yeah. Um, oh, that's with cool. fresh pasta, um, I like to... Um, use it as soon as possible. Um, we try to do that in the restaurant. What happens is fresh pasta, like anything, will dry yeah. out. So if it has quickly, a too, it quickly right? right? So when it dries out and then you, you reheat it or when you cook it, yeah. uh, it doesn't um, it doesn't hydrate the right way and yeah. it'll still be hard and crunchy. Sometimes, so I've made fresh pasta before with my KitchenAid. Uh -huh. You know, those things, those yeah. pasta machines that they have uh, That you put it, on the top. That you put on the top yep. and you like uh -huh. feed it through. Uh -huh. And if you let this stuff sit too long, it gets all like gummy. Yeah, and Gross. it'll stick together. And it'll stick together, but you, you're smart and you have flour on it like to kind of they keep just the moisture stick. off. Well, you know, right? when we make sheets of it, we have to stack it somehow to oh, store it. So, it so they put together. semolina flour. Oh, Sometimes cool. people use cornmeal as well. So oh, okay. you can use either. Oh, that's neat. So this is about, I don't know, maybe five to six ounces of pasta. Okay. For order. Um, one thing that's different in Italy 
that's different in the United States is that um, Americans tend to drown their pasta in sauce, where Italians tend to yeah. just lightly coat it. So that's interesting. You know, I watch people. I watch a lot of Food Network, which I love, and I feel like I watch shows like Giada, and then I watch other people who are have like an Italian show, like I think Angurel uses a lot of Italian recipes and Mario Vitale. They can and Mario seem to put like a lot of stuff in it, where Giada is very simple. Like she only has a few ingredients and it's that simplistic. I went to Italy once and I agree. Like it's mm-hmm. everything is is less I don't know, even the sauce. Less heavy. Less heavy. And people would be like, oh this tastes bland compared to ragu, but like this is authentic <laughs> spaghetti sauce is not meant to have like eight million right. things in it. And I, I'm a fan of both. I really yeah. am. It just depends on what you're trying to present. That's true. So if you want authentic, then it might be different than, say, I have, I'm have i making a Thai, a, an Italian dish that has an Italian bin yeah. or a theme. Or like fused yeah. with some other kind of culture. Okay, so what, one of the problems that we always have in, in a restaurant situation, and I'm, you know, I'm worried, not worried, but um, about now, is when you cut your pasta, keeping it... Um, together but separated enough so that it doesn't stick together yeah um i think we have enough stuff and we'll be making something quickly enough that but i'm just going to leave these kind of spread out here a little bit so you are making good time almost like a lasagna and with somebody saying christopher wheeler saying lasagna uh, almost like it's like double a fettuccine maybe (laughs) it's my finger so yeah that's a good scale so yeah. yeah okay Cool. Anyway, so so what's the process happen? How does so the this process, now? Um, if you're at home, definitely get your water boiling yeah. and make sure it's ready to cook your pasta. Okay. What we do here and um, what I try to do at home when I'm cooking for my family or myself yeah. is get my water rolling. Always, I always usually put maybe a quarter, a quarter more water in the pot than okay. I want, and I personally like to use a really big pot. Okay. Um, there are people that say it doesn't matter what how much pasta water you use to cook pasta yeah it's the I've cooking, heard that. yeah so I, we like to use a lot of water okay i have to ask the one thing about cooking pasta like pasta is my most favorite thing in the uh-huh. entire world uh-huh. and that's the thing that's my go-to i've heard everybody's version of how much salt to put in it i've heard people say put oil in the water do not put oil in the water <laughs> to prevent it from sticking together but Anne Burel, I've just got her book, Cook Like a Rockstar, and that's uh-huh. so, so I, I've been listening to a lot of what she has to say, and she was taught by Mario Batali to put in a ton of salt, like salt, like, she keeps saying salt like the sea. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But what do you think about that? Does it add any flavor, and then reserving some pasta water afterwards, is that something you do? Um, I think salt in the water does improve the flavor. Okay. We do try to do it. The problem is we're in a commercial kitchen, our pasta machines recycle yeah. water and it constantly adds fresh as the oh, you know. That's so we are constantly having to add salt yeah. to the water because it's it's recycling. I don't add oil to the water. Yeah, I don't know why people do. Um, other than some people sticking. right. Some people think it's it sticks. Yeah. I think cooking pasta, cooking in general, is an art form. So yeah. if you like to do it and it works well and you like the flavor, then and do it. For it. Yeah. Then do it. <laughs> that's but cool. I think that salt in the water does add flavor to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so now what are you going to do? Okay, so I'm going to bring everything over to the, the what ring. What do you have over here? Um, this is for uh, some other things that we we're making later. Oh, okay, okay, cool. But I always like to have fresh basil. And yes. I brought, we did um, pre chop some fresh uh, Italian parsley, which is a flat parsley, mm-hmm. for garnishing. And I have it over there ready. I also want to say that we're at Mario's Restaurant in State College, Pennsylvania, 1272 North Athens Street. Got it. Yeah, I did my homework. And I used to work here, so I should know that address by now. Yep. All right, cool. Well, we're going to help mosey on over okay. to the kitchen side, the non-prep side, and go over to the burners. I'll try not to make everybody dizzy in this part, in this movement. Okay, so this is called the line. <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. You can kind of hear, like, the hood of, like, getting all the hot air out of here. Okay, so if you're at home, you're going to make sure that your water is boiling. My water is boiling right over here. Um, even in a commercial kitchen, you have to make yeah. sure the water is boiling. Um, new cooks often get in such a hurry that they try to put the pasta and cook the pasta when it's not hot enough. And it doesn't uh, do anything for the pasta. 
that's when you get soggy or yeah and it just sits in there yeah. oh that's neat so the water is boiling so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start um i like to heat my oil to temperature and then bring everything down okay, okay. so i'm going to turn it up to full blast um i do have some oil um you can use olive oil whatever you like you can just use regular um vegetable oil if you like yeah whatever you have available don't use walnut oils or oh, yeah. se sesame oils uh, oftentimes the flavors will inter interfere with what you want especially cooking. sesame oil yeah, yeah. Uh, and their their smoke points are a bit lower so it will smoke and start to burn yeah. before you're, you're ready so cool. i like to make sure my oil's hot that's another thing when you're cooking is especially sauteing you're trying to sear in everything, so you want to make sure everything's hot and ready to go. Yeah. You can always lower your temperature yeah. as you're cooking, but it's it's difficult. It's to hard to bring it all right. up with everything in it, right. especially when you put a lot of cold ingredients in it. So we're gonna um, heat the oil. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit, but I'm gonna saute our shallots, and okay. that's to start releasing their their flavors. Is that this right uh -huh. here? Oh, there are your shallots, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my fine sir. <laughs> this is really exciting for me because. I, the one thing I, it's like with being in music, a lot of times people tell me like, oh, I love being in music and I always want to put out a CD and I'm like, well, do you, have you thought about, you know, going to a studio or anything? And they're like, no, I just want to, I just want to be a musician. And for me, that's how I feel about owning a restaurant. I love watching you cook and knowing all the information and why you're doing everything and seeing the display of it all. But behind the scenes, I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. So I'm just going to pretend to dream about being in Jen's situation. Uh, you got shallots? Robert Sanchez. Sorry, shallots. Um, I did forget to say, now I'm just remembering, I'm sorry, yeah. that part of this sauce is mushrooms, regular mushrooms. I like to use a combination of wild mushrooms. Yeah. So today, um, what we have here, what we use a lot of is oyster mushrooms, cremini mushrooms, and um, uh, some baby corn. Uh, other part, other baby portobellos. Baby uh, portobellos are my favorite. Anyway, okay. I'm gonna turn down the heat. Cool. Now, what's, what can I help you with? What can I do? Uh, nothing. Okay. okay. She's getting her special mushrooms. Okay. So these are all three mushrooms. We kind of cut them and blended them together. We yeah. use them a lot on the line here. Oh, I like cool. mushrooms, so for one order, I would probably say about three ounces of mushrooms, but if you like mushrooms, add four. Um, if you like more. specific mushrooms, add those. It's okay. And they shrink down, don't they? Yes, they do. I think Jen's a pretty good host of this. I'm a pretty good one? I said, I think... Jen's being a really good host of this. <laughs> I think you're doing a great job. Uh, so, anyway. So now you have your shallots have and your shallots, mushrooms. Shallots and mushrooms. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're going to add our mushrooms. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Where are we? Let's see. Where are we? Now, when you started learning to cook, Eric, what, what did you do? You know, what was the one tip that someone gave you to, to be able to cook better? The one thing somebody told me to use was oil. Use <laughs> what? Use oil? Let's use oil. Oh, use oil. Because okay. I remember, it's now it's such an amateur thing to do, but I remember, you know, not even thinking, oh, I don't need this. You know, I'll just use a nonstick thing and just throw in some vegetables and try to saute it. Well, you need some kind of lubricant uh, with all of that to, to kind of heat it all up, or else yeah. you're just sitting there burning the ends of it and drying it out. So I know that sounds like such an amateur move is to not have oil, <laughs> but that was kind of the first thing somebody taught me how to do. And not being afraid to, to also taste. Not right. being afraid to taste what you're making. And I, that's the one thing you even see in cooking shows and you see on cooking competition shows is people who are afraid to like try what they're making. They just assume it's going to be great. Well, what I was going to say, the one thing we always tell people, and one thing I learned was, yeah. don't ever forget to season with salt and pepper. Other seasonings are great. Yeah. Basil, you know, uh, rosemary, um, you know, different different herbs, curries and things, depending on what yeah. you're cooking. But salt and pepper, to me, is like the basic thing. And yeah. if you would have nothing else, and at just least, salt and pepper. At least yeah. salt, and pepper. salt and pepper. That is true. Every recipe that they ever have in books and anything, or you've learned from other people, I feel like they always have salt and pepper. Okay, so I don't know if you can see. Um, they've, Let me help. 
the, the liquor is starting and, and the water from the mushrooms is starting to be released now. Ah, so that's where that's, you, that's how you want it. Now, you can see it's not oily, although I had oil in there. Yeah. Okay? So that's that's what I need. It. Now, I am going to reduce my heat a little bit. I've seasoned the salt and pepper, and I'll probably do it again. Um, but I'm going to add my cream as this comes off. Okay, so you're putting in heavy cream? Heavy cream. So, I might go off camera in two seconds. I'll entertain you while she goes away. Uh, this is just a really big treat to be able to be here and work, you know, on this cooking show and, and be side by side with Jennifer. Because, I don't know, I, I just always wanted to be, this is, I was here before I ever wanted to cook. Like, I would watch everything, but I was very intimidated by it because a lot of chefs know what they want to do and they're strong individuals and... And sometimes that can be a little intimidating when you don't even know how to cook a chicken. Or even a chicken breast. Wait, so how old were you when you started, like, cooking, cooking? Uh, three years ago, not oh. even. Yeah, recent. Oh, that's great. I was always, like, nervous about it, and there was always somebody else around who, who really knew what they were doing, so I would kind of just step away. Mm -hmm. But then about three years ago, uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do two things I always wanted to learn how to do play piano and learn how to cook. So I took a 14-week cooking class that was four hours every Monday from a chef, a trained chef from CIA. And every week, you know, one week it was broths, one week it was sucking, one week it was frying. Like, and we kind of learned the basics of everything and it just got me really excited. And once I wasn't scared anymore that I was going to kill somebody <laughs> by undercooking or overcooking something, that's when I felt like... I could experiment, right. and that's when it's all of this. I got asked to do NBC uh, in Tulsa. I got asked to do their Monday or Sunday morning segment. So when I'm in town, I do this three-minute thing, and the show came out of three minutes isn't really enough time to ever cook anything. Right, right. And to assemble, yes, but to actually show off how you make something like you're doing, yeah. no, you know, it's yeah. not. So that's why I did this. And I get to do it all over the country, and... Yeah. I'm not really cooking. I'm kind of standing here watching you do it. That's okay. But, uh, um, well, here's what I did. I added about three ounces of cream. Um, and because it was already in a high heat, it started to reduce a little bit. But you can still see it's loose enough. It's not thick like, uh, I don't know if you can see. It's not thick pasty. Yeah. But if it gets that way, it's okay. I think I just dumped some out. Anyway, um, what I've done is I've taken it off the heat so it doesn't reduce anymore. Cool. Um, and I'm just going to put it over here. We're going to cook our pasta. I'm okay. Oh, well, you're good on time. You got about seven, eight minutes. Okay. How long does the pasta usually take to cook? Like a minute? Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Fresh pasta. Thirty seconds. Right, the kind you have some finishing to do, though. Okay. Ronzoni. So ten minutes. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you, she has. What's what is over there? What's that called? She's just the draining the pasta. The what? Oh, what well, she's cooking it in. Oh, I'm cooker. using a pasta cooker, so okay. you know what a fryer is like. It uses oil in place and has yeah. heating elements. Um, oh, as you can see, she's draining the pasta. Okay, you asked me earlier if I put in pasta water. Yeah. Okay. In this case, in a lot of cases, I, I will. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to add it directly here. I drained it as much as possible. and. Uh, but I still like the pasta to be wet enough that it still has some of the pasta water on it and it'll make my sauce a little bit more, um, although I can't even see. Kind of lo uh, loosen it up a little yeah, bit? Yeah, loosen it up a little bit. I use, it's funny, Mario Batali and like a lot of those chefs that cook a lot of pasta, they're always talking about it being like, it's too tight or it's too loose. Loose meaning, okay, if you know what, um, uh, Loose is like when you get when you taste it, it tastes too watery, like yeah. it tastes something. And then tight meaning it tastes like you're there's glue in it yeah. or something, okay? Like so, it needs something else to like right. kind of give it more of an sauce. Okay. So I did this. I'm not on heat anymore, okay? okay. I don't have any heat on because I don't want to overcook anything. Yeah. Um, so the last step in this, after I toss my pasta here, is I'm just gonna take a little bit of truffles. This is the truffle. The truffle, okay? yeah. Okay, like I said, if you cook it, it's going to lose all its flavor. So, yeah. And you don't need a lot, a lot, a little goes a long way. We're going to take about a teaspoon. Okay. Probably a little too much. Put it in there. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to toss it again. I'm going to show this ready. off just one more time. Black truffle. That's it. Um, there we go. So the, the sautéed mushrooms combined with salt and pepper. I probably need to taste this again. Now, if you like a lot of truffles, yeah. add as much as you want. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. go nuts with the truffles. Okay. And then place it in our bowl. You are a pro. Okay, now, the other thing is, is whether you're at home, you whether, you're, uh, you're whether you're at home, whether you're um, by yourself or you're doing a dinner party, I think presentation is really important. So right. what I'd like to do is take a pair of tongs, kind of, you know, put it, everything more in the center, clean up my edges. Some garnishing. I have some fresh chopped parsley, Italian parsley. Okay, and that's Romano a, cheese. That's a sign of a good chef. It's somebody who's like, what else can I like <laughs> make it to, to give it that genesis? So, we're a little early on time, but then there you go. No, are. you are. Truffle you sauce. know what? You are perfect on time. <laughs> you made the perfect 30 minute meal. Like exactly to the tea. <laughs> okay. And it looks delicious. So this is tagliato with truffle sauce. Yes. You are a pro. Thank you thank you so much for being on this little cooking show of mine. We're gonna spread this around, put it up on YouTube, and then you can learn how to make this dish as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Jen Blaine Greeley. And myself, Eric Hyman, this is Trial and Eric. Have a good rest of your day.